The countdown continues, only this time I'm revealing my top 13 episodes from the Russell T Davies era. Number 13. Rise of the Cybermen slash The Age of Steel. I know people don't really like this story, as it involves a version of the Cybermen that didn't originate from Mondas, but this was my first experience with Doctor Who. My friend was a fan of Doctor Who and I was at his house. We planned on getting a takeaway and playing Football Manager whilst the DVD played in the background. And that DVD featured these two episodes. So I guess it's thanks to him this channel exists. Or depending on your view of me, you might want to send him some hate mail. His address is... Number 12. Smith and Jones. Another strong introduction episode for a new companion. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I really think the new companion's introduction episode should focus on the new companion rather than the villain, which is why I think Smith and Jones works brilliantly. And the premise of an intergalactic police patrol forcibly removing a building from Earth and placing it on the moon so they can hunt down a rogue alien life form is just bizarre. But you know what? It strangely works. Number 11. The Next Doctor. As you can probably tell by now, I love the Cybermen. So is it any surprise the next Doctor is on the list? One of the reasons this episode works so well is because we actually believe David Morrissey is the next Doctor. That is until the episode begins to unravel and we learn all is not quite right with his character. By this time we also knew David Tennant was leaving and this was a good way to troll the fans into believing that this may have been his final episode. Number 10. School Reunion Now Doctor Who normally has nostalgic nuggets placed throughout most episodes, but School Reunion was absolutely dripping in nostalgia. Unlike most TV shows that try a nostalgic comeback and fail miserably, this episode pulls it off perfectly. And for once, we see the Doctor in a situation which makes him physically uncomfortable. The Mrs. and the ex, welcome to every man's worst nightmare. Number 9. The Sontaran Stratagem slash The Poison Sky. Let's be honest here. The Sontarans look ridiculous and they've never really been a major threat. But these two episodes had them poisoning the entire planet and that's pretty damn threatening. I just hope one day we finally get a Sontaran story which shows them at their very worst. As I believe there are species within the Hooniverse who can become an intergalactic threat if the writers can leave the Daleks alone long enough. Number 8. Bad Wolf slash The Parting of the Ways Bad Wolf starts off with quite a mystery. How could the Doctor Rose and Jack be transmatted from within the TARDIS? And from then on, things just go downhill for the Doctor. He believes Rose is killed, only to find out she's alive, but she's on board a ship full of Daleks. Plus, watching it in present day shows you how much the Doctor has changed since the conclusion of the Time War. Also, it sets up the premise for Jack's immortality, which would become a huge plot point going forward, especially for Torchwood. Actually, just thinking about it, why wasn't Jack Harkness the hybrid in Hell Bent? Number 7. Army of Ghosts slash Doomsday Yes, it's the two episodes that made the New Who fangirls shed a billion tears, as the 11th Doctor was separated from Rose. This probably would have been higher up on my list if this was the actual end of Rose's story, but as we know with New Who, nothing really ends. It just continues until we're sick of seeing it. Number 6. The Empty Child slash The Doctor Dances I'll give Stephen Moffat credit here. He can make things that aren't creepy, creepy. And what can be creepier than a supernatural dead child asking the same question over and over again? Are you my mummy? We also get to meet Captain Jack for the first time and who doesn't love John Barrowman? Also, I believe this was the only story within the first series to not feature someone dying. Number 5. Rose This was the perfect introduction episode to a returning show that has so much history. Not only did this episode have to appease the older generation of fans, but it also had to bring in a newer generation, and this episode achieves both. 
mainly because we're seeing the world of Doctor Who through the eyes of Rose and we're experiencing what she's experiencing. Number 4. The Doctor's Daughter This is a strange episode as it gives us a chance to look into the Doctor's past but instead of getting answers on who he actually is, we end up with more questions. For example, is Jenny an exact duplicate of the Doctor's daughter? If so, does that mean the Time Lords aren't born, but rather they're created from another's DNA? But the real mystery happens at the end of the episode. What exactly happens to Jenny? Whilst the Big Finish audiobooks are going to answer that question, currently we know nothing. Also, I use the same supermarket as David Tennant and Georgia Moffat, which has nothing to do with the episode. In fact, I'm not sure why I brought it up. Number 3. The Stolen Earth slash Journey's End There are so many reasons to love these two episodes, but if I had to pick one reason for anyone to watch this story, it would have to be for Julian Bleach's portrayal of Davros. When I watch Bleach's performance, I don't see an actor in makeup. I see the character bent on revenge and screaming like a lunatic. The only thing I didn't really like about the story was the cheap regeneration trick. Especially when Tennant's Doctor would actually regenerate just five episodes later. Number 2. Blink. Living statues that move when no one is looking at them, that alone could be a horror movie. Which is why it works so fantastically in Doctor Who. Basically, the Weeping Angels are statue-like lifeforms that have the power to send someone through time and space. Once that person disappears, the Angels feed on the temporal energy that is left behind. In terms of science fiction, it's a simple concept, but those are the ones that often produce the most memorable episodes. And number one, Dalek. The main reason why this is my favourite episode is the first scene between the Doctor and the Dalek. Christopher Eccleston had to portray several different emotions in such a short space of time and he nailed every single one of them. At first he started off sympathetic, hoping that he'd be able to help the imprisoned alien. But once he realises the alien is a Dalek, fear takes control. His emotions changes again when the Dalek's weapon doesn't work and the Doctor becomes ecstatic. Then anger takes over as he's able to vent his frustrations against his enemy without any repercussions. As the conversation continues, he feels regret for the mistakes he's made in the past. Finally, he returns to anger when he's tormented by the Dalek. And all of that happened in under four minutes. So there it is, my top 13 episodes from the Russell T Davies era. Do you agree with my choices? If not, why not comment below and tell me about your favourite episodes.